Last week, we talked about how to prepare for a radio interview and ensure that you get out of the interview what you want. Today, we discuss the secrets of television interviews, how to prepare for them, what to do the day before and the day of your interview, what to wear, how to come up with a pithy soundbite, create chatter on social media, control your body language, and clearly articulate a compelling message. This video is part of an online course for political candidates and those running for office, a soup to nuts guide on how to get started, become a great and magnetic speaker, develop a compelling message, and win an election. Why develop the course? The political establishment has erected barriers to discourage good candidates from running and competing in the marketplace of ideas. The course is designed to make politics easier to understand, make it easier for people to run, and to break down those barriers so that your voice and your ideas can be heard. If you'd like a copy of the comprehensive syllabus for this course, write Roadmap Course in the subject line and send it to j at jtownsend.com. I'll send it to you and answer any questions you may have. Please be sure to visit jtownsend.com to get your copy of my free book, The Ten Worst Mistakes Candidates Make. I'm Jay Townsend. Let's turn to television. There is a fundamental difference between radio and television interviews. Voters are seeing you under very hot lights. Voters will be making judgments about you based upon your dress, your hair, your tone, facial expressions, and body language, and of course the words that come out of your mouth. Last year I helped teach an international symposium in New York City to people who want to become better at television interviews a three-day deep dive on TV interview tips, everything from how to dress, prepare, stay on topic, handle tough questions, and defend a controversial point of view. What I shared with them also applies to any candidate running for office, starting with what you need to know the day the interview is booked, what to do the day before the interview, and the day of the interview. Things you need to know the day the interview is booked. One, who is asking the questions? You need to know their style, how they have conducted other interviews, the kinds of questions they usually ask, whether they interrupt their guest with questions or allow them to talk freely. Two, what is the format? Is it a one-on-one -on -one exchange with an interviewer or are you debating someone who will have a different point of view? Or are you part of a panel where there'll be a free exchange of opinions? Three, what is the setting of the interview? Will you be seated, standing at a table, closeted in a room by yourself while you're asked questions through an earpiece, standing somewhere in a parking lot with a microphone in your face? How long will you be on the air? Is it live or taped? Why do you need to know these things? The same reason a football player needs to know the rules of the game before they walk onto the field. You cannot properly prepare and you will not be your best if you don't know the setting, the rules of engagement, the personalities, and the way your host plays the game. Things to do the day before the interview. Come up with a quotable quote. It's what we call a sound bite or sticky content. Something pithy easily remembered, easily tweetable, that will give your interview a second life on social media. Why? Your interview will be better remembered if you do. One I remember from Margaret Thatcher that was quickly repeated. If you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. How do you come up with a soundbite? One. Make sure you check the daily newspapers the day before and the day of your interview. Look for something in the news that is relevant to your campaign. It's what we call a news hook. For example, if you're talking about railroad safety, you may say that had your proposal been the law of the land yesterday, we'd not be reading about the tragic death of innocent children today. Two, if you can't find a news hook, look for a fresh hook on how your message, your program, your policy would improve the health, happiness, or wealth of the listening audience or a particular demographic group. Example, 
Today we read that three million people will not have a job to go to on Monday. If my plan was in place today, they'd be at work earning a paycheck. Three, pick the clothes you'll wear so that you don't have to worry about broken buttons or a soiled blouse the day of the interview. Do not wear clothes with complicated patterns or garish colors. TV doesn't like them. White shirt, white blouse, okay, but don't even think about wearing a white jacket. Women should be mindful of their skirt length. Do not wear expensive watches or gaudy jewelry. Audiences don't like displays of wealth. You want your viewers to pay attention to your message, not your fancy timepiece or necklace. Four, make sure arrangements have been made for makeup. If not, hire someone to do it right before you go on the air. You will look a lot better under the bright lights of a television studio if you do. Five, finalize your talking points and practice ways to steer the interview to points you want to make during your time on the air. Do it with a friend or an aide. The day of the interview, rules to remember. One, the interviewer may or may not be prepared, may or may not have read your bio, may or may not have looked at your website, may or may not have glanced at your platform, or be familiar with your policy positions. It may fall to you to highlight the important elements of the aforementioned for your audience. Two, you have 15 seconds after the interview begins to convince the audience that watching you is more important than going to the bathroom. If you waste the first 30 seconds on irrelevant chatter, you will have already lost part of your audience. Three, you are not required to give a long answer to every question. It is your job to stay on topic and back, get back to your topic, even if you're asked an off-topic question. Four, if you're greeted with a hostile question, keep your cool, smile, do not raise your voice, never lose your temper. Before we conclude this lesson, I need to touch on body language. Television isn't radio. People are watching you. Your posture and your gestures speak. Use them to enhance your message. And we'll start with the way you sit. Look at your host, not the TV camera. Cross your legs toward the host, not away from the host. To do otherwise makes you look rude. Do not sit back in your chair. That makes you look disinterested. Lean forward toward the host. That makes you look engaging and interesting. Do not point when making a point. That makes you look threatening. If you have a point to make, hold your fingers together this way. Gestures are great, but keep them close to the, your body. Do this and it will look like you're having an argument. Better to do it this way. Palms up. Do not put your hands in front of your face. That is distracting. Keep your hands at or below chest level. When you smile, smile with your eyes. It makes you more likable. Do not bounce your knee or twiddle your fingers during the interview. It will make you look nervous and unsure of yourself. Audiences like confidence. Your assignment. Presume you have been invited to do a 15-minute segment on the top morning TV network or radio station in your jurisdiction. Study the footage of the host likely to do the interview and listen to interviews the radio host has conducted. Make some notes about their style. Are they always prepared? Do they ask hard questions? Do they interrupt? Do they let their guests do most of the talking? Make a list of three things you want viewers to remember a month after your interview, what your soundbite will be and what you'll say in the first 30 seconds. I'll see you in the next lesson.